two double-decker buses could uh, drive through big, big bed plot face together. Yeah. Something I'm really keen to do is encourage people to really reflect on their own education experience. It's quite a strong trigger for people walking in the room. It's very evocative of a certain period and objects in there, even like the smell that, that's in there now, you know, you can still smell the old paper, the paint, the pencil sharpenings. Hope it can be quite a powerful thing for people to see. The idea of frequencies really is something that started through me thinking about the significance of drawing in my practice and how I could find multiple ways of instead thinking about the idea of, of unlearning the dogmatic nature of the adult, for example. This exhibition brings together two projects by two separate artists but that have a related theme. So Frequencies by Oscar Murillo is an ongoing project where him and his team travel around the world and put canvases on school desks and allow children between the age of 10 and 16 to mark those canvases for six months. And he's building an archive of thousands and thousands. The key collaborators are students worldwide, aged 10 to 16. It's an age where students become from children to adolescence. So there is a process of self-awareness that develops. The idea is that students are given freedom to do what they want to do on the canvas. It's called Frequencies because it's taking the frequency of childhood across the world. Frequencies, it has its own parallel existence to my own paintings. Here we are in, in this beautiful countryside of Yorkshire and to think what has it got to do with a, you know, a place of Lebanon, for example. Looking at these canvases, there is this kind of collisions and this uh, amalgamation of frequency, of, of difference, of children of similar age being active in, in different parts of the world, having a, a very different form of the world from where they are living. Ultimately, these kids will become future generations of society. Ruth Ewans is a recreation of a classroom from 1972 from Castleford, which is the birthplace of Henry Moore. And this was a project that Ruth proposed nearly 10 years ago now, after researching in the National Arts Education Archive, and particularly the archive of Muriel Pyra, who was a teacher in that classroom, and who is acknowledged as having a very pioneering approach to education, particularly for children in working class situations. The cathedral now, though, was the previous one. This one had been uh, back uh, burnt down by the fire of London. Mrs Pyra began to evolve her conversational teaching technique back in the days when children were usually discouraged from talking in class. It was to develop confidence and enriched vocabulary and also to give them habits of good speech. The project really explores her uh, teaching um, methodologies. It's really inspired by her sort of twofold idea, which was introducing children to ideas of um, nature study but also the concept of asking out where the exhibition title comes from. When a queen bee hatches out, uh, she goes around stinging all the, well, like destroying all the other eggs which will hatch into queen bees. And to queen not only have sort of peer to peer learning in the classroom, but to really encourage um, children to speak loudly, clearly, to enunciate, to have a, a lot of vocal confidence. I try to find out what each child can do and even in the most hardened cases something does emerge. She was working under a lot of guidance from Sir Alec Clegg who is the local education authority head and really innovative educator himself and um, so he really championed Pyra's ideas. He claimed that the only teacher as good as Pyra was Socrates. Helen Phoebe, the curator here, introduced me to a number of Pyra's uh, former pupils and colleagues who really told a, quite a different story. And although a lot of them really respected her ideas, it revealed a much more complex history. One pupil said to me, I loved being in the class, but I didn't love her. And I think that says quite a lot about the, the story that's been revealed. 
We really want people to sit down, to work at the desks. We've set up nature tables in the room. There's a number of kind of starting points for discussions, questions about education, also invitations to do more kind of drawing, writing words on the blackboard. Yeah, I really hope people will spend time. The two projects I think really complement each other because they are really highlighting the importance of a child-centred focus to learning and creativity and as creative subjects are being cut out of the curriculum it's more important than ever I think that we make that case for the importance of a creative approach to child learning.